Hey guys, good morning. It's me, Josh Halter, owner and founder of The Bio Dude here in uh, Houston, Texas. You can visit my website, thebiodude.com. Uh, check me out on Instagram and Facebook. Of course, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And today, I'm giving you guys uh, a 2019 update of The Bio Dude. Right now, I'm in my office. I have my floor manager, Brittany, right next to me. Brittany, say, say hi. hi. And uh, I'm gonna give you guys just a little bit of update as what I've been going on. So I have a lot of people ask me, Josh, what'd you do with your Ackies? And I got my Ackies actually right in here. So um, this is a 72 inch by three foot by three foot tub. They have, a t they have in some parts about 10 inches of substrate in other parts it goes down to about six. They're not out right now, but they, they're usually out later in the afternoon. I have a, a PowerSun 150, 12% Arcadia, um, uh, an old CFL one here, and then another Power Sun in here. You see the, the original poster. I'm sure you all remember this from early on in the videos. Got my employee board up here with the schedule and everything. And we got the graveyard. People that did not work out at the bio, dude. And we're going we're gonna to head out. So I, got, I bought a trailer, which is, which is pretty cool. Um, I'm getting there. Uh, I'll probably end up getting... Uh, you know, a forklift here in the next couple, next couple months. At least that's the plan. So behind you is my manufacturing warehouse and my office and stuff like that. And then we're gonna keep going over here. So I am open Monday through Friday here at the BioDude Houston, eight to four. So when I first started business hours, I was maybe averaging four customers a week. Now I'm averaging 25. It's going great, guys. I've been working really, really hard. So we keep our trees and a lot of my other stuff outside. My tree inventory is lacking right now because it's off season for my tropical growers. So I'm a little limited, but my overall plant selection has gotten nothing but excellent. So over here we have um, overflow. Um, and overflow, whenever, whenever we have, uh, whenever manufacturing gets done with the product, it goes over here. And then, uh, and then one of my employees uh, will make sure that we are always stocked at shipping and receiving. And his, uh, his name is W. So we have our large bags of substrate here with, of course, all the different BioDude substrates. And then, of course, we have the brand new Terra Arania, which I have a video coming out in the next couple a uh, couple days this is my all new arachnid specialty substrate that works for all biomes i have a six quart size and a three quart size as well as uh got them added on the wholesale i got a lot of good stuff added on the wholesale um as of right now whenever you spend 500 dollars, you get a 1995 flat rate shipping for wholesale orders uh to help grow the brand a little bit as well as i redid the bioshop packaging for wholesale Got the Arania added, and I'm now wholesaling out Sandblasted Grapevine by the case. Soon I'm gonna be wholesaling out Cork Bark by the case and Ghostwood by the case, as well as my Super Grow by the case. Good things coming. Uh, as you can see, all my different exoterra. So over, so this section, not only is it overflow, but it's also where we get a lot of my pallets together. So for, for this, this week, today's Friday, we had three, I think three, two or three pallets go out from here this tall that were about 1500 pounds with all BioDu products going to Oregon, going to Kansas, bunch of other bunch of other cool places. And with the arachnid line, I did decide to get in some of the smaller exoterras, so I got in the 8x8x8s, eight 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 the 12x12x12s, 12 12 the 8x8x12s as well as all the other size exoterras here. I, di I did also expand my uh, leaf litter inventory to carry the large oak as well as the smaller oak, maple. Still working on magnolia, guys. If it's starting to fall, bring it to me if you're in Texas. So then over here uh, is where I keep all the different plants. So my plant shipment's going to be coming in next week. So I'm only at about 50% of normal inventory right now. So we have a bunch of my smaller desert terrarium plants here. We have a bunch of different aloes, all edible. Really cool stuff here. We got aloes, we got some beautiful succulents. And then of course we have your smaller succulents for the botanical line right here. These are really popular and I really like these. These are one of the cooler plants that, you know, that we get to use. So, uh, some Haworthias and some Cryptanthus earth stars. Excuse me, and then over here we have uh, some of the elephant feeds. 
You see some of my grow and glow here on the tables. That's because every single grow and glow that comes in here, I, we hand test. And you know it's hand tested because they will always say tested by in the date. So that way we know that we're not sending you any type of defective product. We have the elephant feed here of both the sizes. We have the six inch pot elephant feed and the three inch pot. So to give you an example of the difference, there's the three inch or six inch pot, there's the three inch pot. The, 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 the major difference is while the six inch pots are only slightly bigger, their root systems are significantly more extensive. So it really helps uh, your learning curve make the green thumb a little bit bigger because it gets established a little bit easier. Uh, more, more terrariums over here. I have the, the 75 gallon that, that, that you guys saw in Hercules' video, a bunch of the different size exoterras. Soon I'm gonna be carrying the exoterra chameleon cages as well. And I am uh, most likely gonna be phasing out the Zoomed cages. In fact, I'm phasing out a lot of the Zoomed products. Uh, the Zoomed heat domes, uh, a lot of like the a lot of the really common stuff that a lot of the other vendors have. And I want to be straight up honest with you as to why. Because ZoomEd and some of these other manufacturers have I've been working with Chewy and other businesses to ship straight from straight from manufacturer. So you have your middle people like Central Pet and Garden and other places like that that are charging you, the business, the same price that a place like Chewy is charging the consumer with free shipping just can't compete with that. And I, and I ask myself, why would I want to carry somebody else's products? Because by the end of this year, not only am I going to have my full, a full heat dome line, I'm going to have a full heat bulb line to go with it. I'm coming. Zoom at Exoterra. I'm knocking on the door. So we have a couple of custom terrariums over here and then some more tropical plants. As you can see, I have your tall, some taller tropical plants. I got some newer types in. I really, li uh, really like these. These are called Calithia lanceiflorias. They get pretty tall. They're very, very strong, and they're pretty easy to keep alive. We got some crotons, some aglomondo bays, and then this rack over here, I keep a lot of my mosses and my lower light plants. So as you can see here, we got a bunch of the different Selaginella plants in here. I love these. These are really cool. And it's also called spike moss. So all the plants that don't like to have really, really bright light, we keep over here. We keep my pillow moss and sheet moss in these bins that is consistently rotated out and watered uh, to make sure that A, not only the moss stays nice and healthy, but make sure it has that nice solid green color for when it arrives at your door with free shipping. So then we'll go over here. Oh, there's one more. The hedgehog. This is another new, uh, a new plant that I got that I'm carrying. Pretty cool. Also completely edible. We got our spaghetti agaves over here too. And of course, all the large aloes. So next we're gonna go here into customer service. So this is actually the customer entrance over here. And in this office, you guys will find Key and Amber. Key is one of my new hires here. He started on Monday and he is already kicking butt. And, and, and y'all already know Amber. There's a lot of people that have gotten customs from her. They're both hard at work, making sure that, you know, we're getting back to emails, messages, YouTube comments, making sure that uh, any questions or problems that we're handling them in the most appropriate way. We have the customer education station right here. So a lot of customers come in here, they not only rely on our expertise, but they also rely on us to give them as much educational take home material as possible to make sure that they're providing the best, the best care for their reptiles and amphibians and tarantulas. And that is what we're here for. So you can see uh, some more emeralds. So the emerald tree skinks have been breeding and I had to separate out my groups and I now have two 36 by 18 by 36 terrariums with these guys. And I swear, they're my favorite. Yeah, so you can see one of the little babies up here. As of right now, I've hatched out over four babies that have hatched naturally out of the, out of the terrarium. And yeah, I know, what am I doing? Oh, oh there goes another one back there. Hey, what's up? What are you doing? Fine. I'm sorry for messing with you. So I made their I made their setup a lot more simple, just for the simple fact of and the one reason I had to separate them out is because the dominant male, the bull, was beating the crap was trying to beat the crap out of the other ones, and I was getting concerned that there was just too many in that size of a space. So now there's four in that cage next door. And I think four in this cage next door. There might be five in the one next door, and I'll show you guys. Down here, we have the red-eyed tree frogs, which have been breeding and doing great. 
or an average three to four babies morph out every month and I just leave the babies in there. The adults are doing great as well. This is my original colony that I had for many, many years. You can see a fresh, uh, uh, a baby that's about, probably about a month and a half old right here that just hatched out from all the tadpoles. There's all life stages in here. There's tadpoles, there's froglets, there's adults, and there's most likely eggs somewhere because we've been having um, lots of heavy rainstorms and even hail down here in Texas. You guys, I'm sure you remember the dumpy tree frogs and the waxy monkeys. The Borneos are in here and the carpet chameleons are in here. The carpet chameleons did breed. Uh, and unfortunately, I did not pay. I didn't put in enough time in with the eggs and I l lost the eggs one weekend. But let me see if I can find, find one of them here. Speak, Brandon, use your words. Follow me in the back corner, but there we go. Oh, there you are. Come here. You guys can see the remember remember the original video. I got so much criticism for this video, and these guys are thriving. They are doing great. They they are being kept together, and they're healthy, eating, and their tank is just flourishing. It's very thick and dense, exactly what they like, mimicking the forest floor. Oh, I love it. And then uh, the Borneos in here ha are have been pretty secretive, but lately they've been coming out the bask. Um, and you know, you see how overgrown this tank is. I haven't done any trimming or anything with it. This is that same paludarium that I set up with my Super Grow about a year or so, month a year or so ago. And I'm sure you guys remember the dumpies that were next door. And are any of the dumpies out? I don't believe so. All right. So next, we got some, some nice Botanica setups over here. You know, dig it. You keep up the good work, guys. You know, and keep going. All right. Back to work, Brittany. <laughs> so I changed the warehouse a little bit. So we got all the different lights. So I told you guys that, that I'm phasing out a lot of the Zoomed. The Zoomed products I'm keeping are the Nano Line, the natural terrarium hoods, um, and the under tank heaters, and some of the bulbs, because it's until I get my own line. But of course, with the Exoterra, we have the compact tops, which I love to use with the Grow and Glows because they function great. Um, and then of course, we have like the Grow lights in your normal Reptile Dome lights. Uh, and then we come on to keep moving down here, and we have my full Glow and Grow line, which I'm sure y'all are somewhat, somewhat familiar with. My pride and joy. These have been doing well. They've been doing really good. The first uh, actually, the second manufacturing run, I had a couple customers overturn the base, which is very frustrating because even though I include this at the very front, the instructions on how to install, it still doesn't get red even when it's taped to the light. So um, with the next batch that is being manufactured, with how I have these designed, I'm actually double downing on the wiring thickness uh, to make sure that even with people um, turning it like a muscle man, that we don't have any of these overturns. But I can comfortably say of the 5,000 units that I've ordered, I would say I've had roughly 70 defective, which is pretty good. I'll take that any day of the week. And we have, of course, the LED props. Uh, really soon, the LED props are gonna have full packaging uh, that's gonna match the Grow and Glow line, and that's gonna be a big pivotal thing for wholesale. Same thing with the LED adapters. Of course, we have all the Zoom Ed, the Zoom Ed lights, and then we have Arcadia. So I'm actually waiting on the 24 and 36 inch fixtures to get here, but I carry all three sizes of the Arcadia, plus I also carry the Shade Dwellers, but I'm sold out. I'm also gonna be adding the replacement bulb for the Shade Dwellers when it arrives here on Tuesday. So I'm really, really excited about that. Of all the UVBs out there, Arcadia is the best. It is hands down the best out there. They last the longest. They put the most money into the technology behind it. If you're gonna spend the money on UVB, spend the money on Arcadia. Yeah. We got thermostats. You know, I got, uh, so I completely relinquished the Vivarium Electronics line. To be honest with you, I like the products, um, but they carried too high of a price point uh, for, for what you got, especially when you can get the Exoterra thermostat 
for about 40 bucks in free shipping. Uh, I will be getting in the Herbstat line at some point. I hope to have that in by the end of the second quarter, but that is one line that I've gotten a lot of requests on from my YouTube followers as well as customers that come here at the store. And trust me, I've been listening. It's just, you need a lot of capital to get, to put your feet into that line, but I will get there. Uh, and then we have woods. So you guys know the bio dude's the wood king. We got tons of different ghost wood. I had carry a couple sizes, 12 inch, 14, 12, 12 inch, 14 to 16, 18 to 24 inch. A lot of times your 24 inch ones, they look like this or a little bit bigger. And a lot of times they're a couple inches more than 24 inches. Um, a lot of times they'll go to like 30, 32. Um, it just really, really depends on, uh, on what inventory I got in and what stock I got in. I have two different sizes of ghost of the grapevine. I have the 12 inch and then I got the 18 inch. Uh, these I do wholesale by the case, like I said. Uh, this wood does really good with your not so wet biomes because it breaks down pretty quick, but it's great for, the, for your Sahara, Arania, and Firma. And some fauna, depending on the humidity spikes. We got Mopani. So Mopani is really popular in the, in, for some terrariums, but it's really, really heavy. Heavy. Um, so I don't like shipping this stuff very much, but uh, uh, soon I'm going to be carrying different minerals as well. Dragonstone, hopefully small ammonites and other stuff like that. Uh, little mineral accents or fossil accents that you can put into your terrarium. And we got the Malaysian driftwood right here. Got a bunch of different sizes of that. And then we got spiderwood and bamboo over here. So spiderwood, so I have bamboo of three different sizes, 12, 18, 24. And then here's a spider wood. This is another thing that's pretty popular. Very, very detailed. And, and what you use for stuff like this is great for mimicking uh, tree root systems, like at the top of a marsh. So I'll, I'll show you something similar in the showroom for the cinnamons that I use the spider wood for. Then we come over here and I have a bunch of the exoterra decor. Now I love this stuff. I think it's a really neat little puzzle piece to put into your terrariums because a lot of reptiles like to use them as hides. We have the glowing mushrooms, which are really popular. Those are probably the number one seller compared to the T-Rex. Um, the dinosaur eggs have a water dish built in, which is really nice, but you know, I really like the different skulls. I have the rock outcrops as well, as well as the tiki, the tiki line items. So what's cool about these is they have holders for your crested gecko or whatever for, for, for your nectar eaters. So you can put your Pangea, Rapashi, whatever type of diet you want in there and you and have that be your sub, have that be your food holder. But it's just something that's a little bit different. And we have the waterfalls. We have the, the large tiki waterfall and the small tiki waterfall. These are also really popular. I have one running uh, with cane and I'll show you guys once we get to the showroom. We have the full Miss King line over here. I sold out of starters, I'm waiting for them to come in. We have the ultimates, foggers, zoomed foggers, uh, the mister, the, the hand pump misters, and more smaller decorum from Exoterra, mini primate skulls, mini dinosaur eggs, you know, bunch of bunch of cool stuff here. Then we're gonna migrate over Mia, and we have more water dishes. So I have all the whole Exoterra line of water dishes, and then we also have the Flukers line. People like the Flukers line because it looks like natural stone, whereas your Exoterra line, they look like these. Uh, I, ha I carry two Zilla products. The one is the Zilla Power Center, which I'll eventually have one of those myself, and then the Terrace dishes. And that is the only Zilla product that I will probably ever carry in my lifetime. And then we got uh, we have the Exoterra gecko dishes and the worm dishes. Uh, these are just, again, nice little accent pieces that you can put into your terrarium for people that want to take an easier route. That's what we're about here, making things a lot easier for you so you can provide the best care rather than the basic care. Uh, I keep all my diets in here. I'm sure you guys are well aware of my bug grub. So I offer a couple different sizes. We have one pound, two pound, and four pounds. And then the bug rub is great uh, because it can be given in a wet, wet form and in the form of Play-Doh and, and like you can create small balls or it can be used as dry. What I like to do, especially when you're dealing with neonatal reptiles and amphibians, especially dart frogs, is I'll create some bug rub and I will take a little piece that's about this big between my fingers there. 
and just put little pebbles of bug grub throughout the terrarium. What's going to happen is the isopods, the springtails, the earwigs, the crickets, whatever you have is in there to feed them will swarm it. And what that's going to do is create a feeding station. So your neonatal reptiles or amphibians, immunocompromised animals, they don't have to expel as much energy to get their food. So it really helps with the recuperation process. Just yesterday, for the bug grub, I sent out to a lab to get a full breakdown, a guaranteed analysis that is also going to include the calcium and phosphorus ratio, as well as show proof of the carotenoid ratio with beta carotene and robaxin because as i've told you guys before a lot of amphibians use robaxin to synthesize uh, vitamin a uh, whereas you know a lot of other reptiles synthesize beta carotene uh, use beta carotene to synthesize vitamin a so not only are you going to have a vitamin a breakdown on this label there's going to be a breakdown of the carotenoids that your reptiles and amphibians need to actually use the stuff in it that's what's wrong with a lot of products is they, they say there's so much in here, they, they, there's so much vitamins, minerals, and nutrients, but if you're not providing the carotenoids that their bodies need to actually utilize them, it's empty. It's, almost, it's also the same principle uh, with, uh, with uh, UVB and providing different types of calcium with types of UVB that you're using. Uh, so then over here, we have the resurrection fern logs, the super grow, and the chameleon pouches. You guys are really, I'm sure you're aware of how my chameleon pouches work. They have become a very popular item. It makes me really happy because chameleons are, of all the, besides turtles and tortoises, in the hobby, they get it the worst. They get it the absolute worst. And they are the ones that need the most help when it comes to the general public. And that's what I'm changing. My newest product, which took me a long time, are my all-new digital thermometer hygrometers. So I did carry the Vivarium Electronics line, and I kept running into the same problem. They, the, the, the probe would always get stuck at 99% with humidity. This has an upgraded probe, and it's not supposed to do that anymore. BioDude's really, really happy to get these launched. I just added these to the website yesterday, and we've already sold over 40 units in less than 12 hours. I dig it. We have all the different supplements here from, from no D to Herptivite to the Calcium Pink label uh, to Reptisafe to Tadpole Food to the Mineral, which is one of the best food for chameleons, or excuse me, one of the best supplements for chameleons. Um, I was actually really happy to find this uh, because it was becoming very hard to find. And we're going to keep moving on down, and we got all the different screen protectors here. We have the dude's new calcium bone, which we, are, which we use for the springtails and isopods. We also have all the different size Bioshot, Miss King pieces, and all the different nut pods. And as you can see, I have everything color-coded on the website. So when you say Miss King L nozzle assembly yellow, that's how my order fulfillment specialists know, know which to grab, so I color-coded everything. And then the bio shot's pretty, you know, self-explanatory. So then we go over here. Hey, Joe, say, 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 say hi to my, all my followers. We got a bunch of, uh, a bunch of the, of the uh, cork bark tubes in here, as well as the cork bark flats. I keep all of the different biodegradables up over here. So one of the newer biodegradables that I added for the Arania line is a mixture of spag moss and leaf litter in a three-quart bag. Uh, this is something that's becoming very popular, as well as the cork bark pieces. So I now have moved the cork bark pieces into the smaller bag, and they're included with all the Arania kits. Uh, and people really seem to like them because they also have free shipping. We come over here, and we have all the substrates. We have my terraflora, fauna, firma, and Sahara of all the large bags on average. On Monday, we'll ship about 30 bags of Sahara, maybe 26 bags, maybe a fauna and flora each, and maybe about 6 to 12 bags of Hydro Grove, the large ones, a week. Uh, and then we get to the smaller bags, and I can't tell you how many small bags of, of, uh, of each I move a day. I just know that we are constantly having W replace them. So I did show you guys the Arania in the 6 quart. Here's the 3 quart bag size for for the arania again guys i'll be launching this video real soon and this is a one-of-a-kind substrate i'll tell you i'm so excited about it 
And then you guys know, know the Botanica. The Botanica is another one of the lines that I offer for micro terrariums, which is really popular. We have the, all the Pangea food. All this stuff up here is on clearance. Like I said, these are the, these are the Zoom Ed items that I was talking about that there's no point in me carrying because Chewy undercuts everybody. And then we have the Timothy Hay for your Shalonians. Uh, and it's very, very important to give your Russian tortoises, Greek tortoises, you know, different types of hay because it has uh, special fibers and proteins in there that they need for their gut system to keep them happy and healthy. So as you can see, Joe's here working on the orders, getting them done. It's actually Friday and it's really nice. We only have about 20 orders today and we've needed a breather. Ever since I've changed the wholesale, um, they, the wholesale has been growing and coming in and that's what I've been working hard for is growing the wholesale because that's what's going to take me to the next level. Really excited about it. So essentially all the boxes line, I put all the boxes here. Today, Home Depot boxes are gone. They, the one that comes in today, new BioDude boxes that have the black thumb on all four sides with up arrows that says this side up. By the end of the first quarter of this year, every single box that leaves my warehouse is gonna be BioDude branded on all four sides. Not only are these heavy duty double stacked boxes, they all have a crush rating of 250 pounds and can maximum handle and ship 250 pounds, which means that these are some of the best shipping boxes that you can buy. And you guys know, I'm shipping heavy substrates, delicate lights, and, and plants. You need a good sturdy box to handle the shipping process and that's one thing that I say that the BioDune staff here excel at. We're working on getting our shipping costs down for, our, for the normal consumers on the website. That's something I'm working really hard towards. Once I have all my boxes done and branded, you guys will see a set shipping price if you spend X on the website. It's just getting that shipping algorithm down after I know all of my costs going into buying bulk boxes. So you can see it all lines up here and then we have all of the marketing materials that go in. So we have the dude's guide to the Terra Arania. We have the dude's guide to the Firma and Sahara, the dude's guide to the flora and fauna. And then we have all the different inserts up here. We have the bug rub inserts, the bug, excuse me, the bug inserts, the media, the botanica, the resurrection fern logs, live moss, herbivore and omnivore ed edible plant guide, bromeliad and air plant care, tree and shrub care, tropical plant care and succulent cacti care. We got a bunch of stuff, a bunch of stuff in here. And if you guys can think of, uh, of any more inserts that you guys would like to have, we're all ears. There is a UVB one coming soon that if you guys order a UVB bulb from me, it's gonna be a peel off sticker that you write the date of when you installed the UVB bulb and then it's gonna add, add on eight months for when you need to replace it. So that way you have something in front of you whenever you turn that light on and off to consistently remind you, okay, April's coming up, I gotta replace Hercules' bulb so we don't forget because we all know how important UVB is for most reptiles and amphibians. So now let's go to the best part, shall we? So here's more overflow for marketing materials. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Michael Scott. Well, I, I guess, I guess Wayne, Wayne Gretzky. So in here, this is, uh, this is w, uh, w is my curator of foreign fauna, fauna, as well as helps maintain uh, the overflow, like I discussed with you guys earlier. So if shipping and receiving ends up taking all of the Terra Sahara, W is gonna be taking all those bulk bags of Sahara and loading them up on the shelf for order fulfillment. So first, let's take a look. Let's take a look at the emerald since he actually has this open. So these guys have been breeding like crazy. You can see one of them right there. I'm surprised they're actually not trying to jump out. And, and it's about to happen. <laughs> um, I know there's at least one baby in here. There's one back there too. And where I think that's not the bull male. Where's the bull? I want to show the viewers. Back. The bull male is back there. Th this is his domain. This is his house. There is no other animals in this cage that belong as far as he's concerned. But 
He has helped create some excellent, beautiful, healthy babies. Uh, and uh, the dynamic in this environment is consistently changing. Now guys, this is all the same stuff for that video that I did. So this is all the same substrate, same wood, same plants, same everything. The only thing that we do is add fresh moss every now and then uh, to give the terrariums a little bit more of the pop. Over here, we have the Chinese gliders. Again, all the same stuff. These guys are doing great. Uh, now, on, ideally, these guys would be kept um, outside. I just, it's, it's just not in the cards yet, because these guys can actually glide in their terrarium uh, if you give them the opportunity. But even this cage is too small for them to be able to do it. Unlike, uh, unlike a lot of tree frogs, uh, these guys do require UVB. So they do like to have a Reptus. I currently am using a Reptosun 5.0 but that bulb is set to expire in two months, which then we will be getting an Arcadia 6% to give to them, which will be replaced every eight months. And then we have the Cubans. You guys remember the Cubans? They had babies. So I know there's more eggs in here somewhere. And let me see if I can pinpoint the girl, but both of them are back here. And I gotta tell you, I'm sure you guys remember their story, but they were rescues from a reptile show. They were little. Look at that color. Almost, almost ha ha have the blue hue. Yeah, I know. You are not so happy. And we got the big dewlap. Yeah. Now, I'm not sure where the baby is because the baby is in here. I haven't separated them out yet because there's so many earwigs, roaches, isopods, springtails in here. That just gives the baby so many options for food and the adults don't seem to be bothering it, but we are keeping a very, 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 very close eye. Here's my girl. How fat she is. Honestly, she's probably grab it again. Yep. Dig it. Oh, I love your, I, I, it's just, it, it, it's so rewarding to see these guys thriving and doing so well because they were not, not in good shape when I got them. And of course, they are hooked up to the Mist King, which you can see here. So I have two Mist Kings in this room. I have one for this side and one for this side. And the reservoir is right down there. And then here we have Kane. Now, Kane has bone cancer. And he was given to me from a customer of mine who couldn't take care of him anymore. Now, he's in shed right now. And you can see here in the caudal aspect here, and here is a mass. So the mass really hasn't changed sides, uh, but he, uh, you know, he doesn't like being messed with very much, and we just give him all the love that he deserves while he's here. He gets a bunch of different worms and everything, and when it's warm outside here in Texas, he is put outside pretty much every day. It's a little too cold for uh, over the, these past two months to put him outside. So he, right now he has his Arcadia, a Power Sun UVB and a heat bulb in here. So he has two different forms of UVB. Um, and he's getting supplemented with extra, a little bit of extra beta carotene and he has been dewormed to help keep him nice and healthy until his time does come. But you can see the, the uh, Tiki waterfalls here. They're pretty awesome. You, like I said, you guys know I'm a natural type of guy, but this, I saw these and I was like, this is, this is cool. I'm down. And then, and then we come on we come onto this side, and in here we have the corn snake enclosure, which I'm sure you guys remember this enclosure. This substrate is over 10 years old. We have tunnels everywhere. There's no feces anywhere. The snakes, on the other hand, God only knows where they are. We have a bunch of different ghost wood and other things in here. A lot of times they like to hide underneath this cork tube because there's they can go in the cork tube and then they can go directly under. And a lot of times we'll see them just sticking up and then the moment I come into the room, they're, they're gone. Down here, my oscillated skinks, which, I'm, which you guys I'm sure remember this video. You can see some of them over here. So these guys have been breeding for me as well. They are live bears. I have produced many, many different babies, and the girl is actually pregnant. Again, you see how fat she is. She is, a, she is enormous. I just can't get over it. And they're, and they're doing extremely well. And then down over here, we have the Rococo toad, which I have a pretty good inkling of where she is. Negative. Let me 
Now, Rococo toads are like marine toads in the aspect that they get very, 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 very large. Come on, Jabba. Oh, I got you. She's, she's getting bigger. Putting on some weight. So I've had her for a long time, and she really hasn't grown that. She, she's doubled in size since I've had her. I know. What's going on? This cage is all hers. And marine toads are, you know, a big problem in a lot of countries. But Rococos are very, very, very uncommon. And the best part about her is she was labeled as a marine toad. So I paid $9 for her. But as many of you know, Rococo toads go for hundreds of dollars. So, oh, oh, there we go. I'm sorry. In with you. And I do provide her a mild basking spot, uh, which she does utilize on the regular, on top of that cork. In here, we have El Tomato Frogs. Now, these guys are listed under CITES, so that they're not imported anymore. So, nice and simple here. Check that out. So I have a group of six. And if you make them mad enough, they can secrete like a goo. Look at that. Awesome. Will I breed these guys one day? Probably. They're not hard to breed. You pretty much put them in a big tub with about two inches of water above egg crate uh, with a heater to warm the temperature to, I think, 80, 81 degrees um, and have the water moving with pumps and they'll, they'll have thousands of tadpoles and then they're protein eaters so imagine feeding thousands of tadpoles that need lots of protein it's expensive it takes up a lot of space so in here here's another one of my chameleon pouch setups you can see how it's thriving like a lot of my other setups and here is my falsy who is also doing excellent so i don't know if you guys remember i originally purchased two and i lost the female uh, about a month after i bought her I don't know if, if she didn't handle the deworming or it happens with wild with wild caught specimens, unfortunately, but we've been doing great and I love their cryptic coloration and their laxed demeanor. That's what I like most about these guys is they're very laxed and a lot of times they'll be right out in the open and they won't care about anything. They'll just be here, out here chilling. And then we have the other Miss King system right here, which controls this entire side of the room. Last but not least, the cinnamons. So I started off with a group of eight. Guess how many I have in here? About 85. I have all life stages from tadpoles to egg to adults to subadults all the time. Now this is a completely aquatic base. There is no substrate in this terrarium whatsoever. So what I love about the cinnamons is they're completely transparent. You can physically see their heart beating, which is pretty awesome. They're really easy to keep alive. Uh, they've been reclassified in the genus of Thalioderma, which is in the same category as your mossy frogs. Uh, and they're very easy to breed. Pretty much keep them under 80 degrees with lots of uh, branches and places to hide and they will thrive of course all of my terrariums have my glow and grow leds on here um, as well as you know a lot of my other different woods products and things like that and then up top up here, these are this is actually i got from a guy named tell hicks at narbc he hand draws all of these with the exception of these three paintings here uh, these paintings are uh, hand-drawn by a 14-year-old girl that I picked up at a show called East Texas Herpetological Society, and she had a small table, so I went and bought a ton of paintings for the showroom. And guys, I really want to appreciate, I really appreciate everybody continually following my business. I really appreciate, you know, the, the, the ability to continually serve and help the hobby grow as well as, not, as, well as educate and improve the lives of the animals that we all love so much because that's what's important at the end of the day is making sure that the animals that you know that don't you know that don't have any choice except with what we give them to make sure that we are providing the best rather than the basic again guys my name is josh halter visit my website thebiodude.com follow me on youtube instagram do divides <laughs>